Um, I'll tell you about myself as you get ready. So I'm a biochemist, and I told I told some of you guys my whole personal story already. <laughs> but I, I wanted to study biochemistry from the time I was like 10 years old, I, and I wanted to know more about how our body works. My uh, great grandmother had died of Alzheimer's disease, and I wanted to know like what made our brain stay healthy in the first place. Like how did it work? If it could go that bad what was making it work in the first place. So, I, um, okay, that's my first slide? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At the end, my name will appear and you can, <laughs> you can get my website and everything. But, um, I went to college and my academic advisor told me that biochemistry was going to be too hard. And um, I have a political yeah. science degree from under us. Yeah, right? A degree of us who are like, yeah. oh, everything else is too hard. And um, I really still love biochemistry. So I wanted, to, when I got out, I was 25 and, um, uh, you know, doing a job that was okay, but I didn't really like it. And I, I wanted to make a story and a, a digital interactive story about proteins so that everybody could learn what proteins do and nobody would be afraid of molecular cell biology. And believe it or not, that crazy dream has motivated me. <laughs> Till now, I'm 45 and not 25. So, all right. So, I did a PhD in biochemistry and I studied, uh, what did I study? Uh, cancer. And then I studied tuberculosis and um, I would tell my friends, no, I can't come out, I have to do lab work. And they would say, why, what are you doing? And I would explain it. And um, you always have to start with, oh, there are these cells and they have receptors. And that blows everybody's mind already. And so now you can't tell your specific research. You know, I'm working on neurons and so that is the brain. So what I want to do is get all of you guys familiar with cells and receptors and signals that bind receptors. And that's it, that's my goal. And then we'll all be able to say, I'm working on this cell and this receptor. And everybody else will say, oh, that's interesting, tell me more. <laughs> okay, and that's it. All right, so the other thing is, I know a lot of you are parents, and you're thinking, well, how do we know these games are any good, right? What are these games doing to our kids' minds? And I wanted to know that too. I really did. And so um, one of the very first things I did in 2008 when I moved here to DC to, to work in a learning technologies program, I can tell you all in more detail. But the first thing I did was I said, how are we gonna know if our kids are getting more confident with the material? How, how are we gonna test that? And most people, when they, they test, they say, do you wanna be a scientist? And you have a scale, one to five, yes or no. Uh, is science for you? Is a career in science something you're interested in? And if you think about it, what is science? Is it physics? Is it cells? Is it uh, astronauts? Whatever your image of science is in your head will be what you think when you answer the question. And I pretty much think that if I say, do you want to be a scientist, this is not what you're thinking of. And so I want you to be familiar with cells and receptors. And so I want, I want to go direct, right to the topic and say, do you think you can understand this? Okay, and the, the other thing that I wanted to know, and I think all of us want to know is, what's gonna make our kids, or ourselves, you know, when we go back to community college to change jobs, what's gonna make us feel confident? What's gonna make us feel like, hey, this is something I can do? So when you look at this, and I can tell you, when most people look at this, when 50% people look at this, they say, I do not think I can understand that. What I want you to feel like, though, is like, oh, that's my stuff. You know, those are Pokemon I'm familiar with. That's like Superman, that's not Batman. We all, we all know our favorite superhero. And, you know, the people who like Aquaman can go on and on about what Aquaman can do and why he can talk to whales, even though they're not fish. <laughs> right? But it, that's because learning about Aquaman is fun. There's stories and movies, and we learn that way. It's okay. What I want is for people to look at this and say, oh, it looks familiar, I'm gonna read more. Or, it's my first day of biochemistry class and all those other kids know a lot more than I do, but this looks familiar to me. I'm not gonna check it out, like some people do. Okay, so I made up this question and this is the results we got. So, um, we tested it with seventh graders to 12th graders 
And uh, this data is all um, 10, 11, and 12th graders. And you can see that uh, up on the top there, the N is equal to 161. That means 161 kids um, are in the control group. They're gray. And 180 kids are in the test group, that, the black line. So the black line is after you play our game, what's your answer? And the gray line is before you play our game, what's your answer? So um, I'm gonna step away from the mic, hope you can still hear me. But um, this gray line shows you that 50% um, of the kids, so 25 and 25, 50% of my kids said no. I disagree, I will never understand it, or I don't think I can understand it. And then this is the neutral. But after they played the game, which looks very similar to this figure, um, they were shifted. So only 25% total said no. So we cut the number of kids in half, the ones that look in that first image and say, oh my god, this is not for me. And so I was really excited because um, I was afraid it wouldn't work out. Then I wanted a control figure. I had this great data. Now I want to make sure that it's real. So I did a control figure. And this figure here is from a textbook. It's a simpler figure. So our, our control students don't get as scared by it. But it's also very textbooky. You know, there's no real thing going on. There's nothing happening. And um, it's also different. So these are yellow cells, and they're flat compared to these nice round U-shaped nucleus, round blue cells. So these look like the game and these do not. And so after playing the game, our students are very similar to the control students. We, we do not see a statistically significant increase in confidence with this figure that doesn't look like the game. Okay, so that meant to me that um, this, this figure was really having an effect, that the game was having an effect on confidence. And what it also means to me, and we can debate this, I'm going to get done fast and then we can all debate it. If you're a teacher and you want to introduce cells for the first time, and cells, receptors, proteins, all these things are abstract concepts, you can have the kids play the game first and then show them images that look like the game. Don't go with the simplified textbook models. Use some complicated ones that look like the game. So you're not going to introduce Batman with like a stick figure that doesn't even have a bat on his chest, right? <laughs> you would introduce Batman with the whole head. Okay. So the next slide is the last slide. Then we can all like debate and ask lots of questions because I have a lot more data we can discuss. But okay. The last question is: um, Will all this learning translate into something that helps you in real life? So what I did here, this. This data panel here, this is real data. So this is a, um, remember before we had the cells rolling, or there were those blue cells? No, oops, oops, oops. Okay. These are endothelial cells, this is your vein. So this is, this is happening inside a vein, and this is the wall of the vein. So you can take those vein cells and grow them in a petri dish. And then you take a picture of them with a microscope, you have a camera on your microscope. This is what the cells look like. So each one of these little bumps is a cell, an endo, a vein cell. And then you can take your white blood cells and put them in the petri dish and shake them around and rinse it off. And if, if you have the right proteins on your endothelial cells, the white blood cells will stick. If that protein is missing, they won't stick. And our players, know that from playing the game. We can, I can show you the game later. But your white blood cells will cling to cells that have selective protein on surface. These words sound familiar to our players because they used selectin, they used ICAM, and they know endothelial cells. But they never saw something that looked this weird. And this is really odd looking. And so we didn't see a, a giant increase, but it is statistically significant. And what's really nice is again we went we half the number so like 18 percent down to nine percent of that. So 18 percent said definitely not. I can't understand this weird figure. But after playing the game, um, the definitely not number is half. And also you can see here that there, there's a shift to the more positive. And this is what I want. I want you know the average American to open a book and see something like that, or the Sunday, the Tuesday science edition in the New York Times, and read more. 
Okay. So then I took all this data and created a new game. And then the new game is designed to make you interact with the receptors more. To get you to learn more stuff. Because what I found in the learning data that I didn't show you is that anything that you need to use to win, you remember. You remember the name, you remember what it does, <laughs> and you remember that it's a protein and it's not a lipid or carbohydrate. I tried to ask as tricky questions as possible. And the players of the game knew that they were they were using a protein and the protein had this this job to play. So I made a game that required you to interact with even more things. It's a strategy game. And in this game, you can buy a white blood cell. This, this is a white blood cell. And these are receptors. And so you can, you can click on your white blood cell and select it. And you can change the receptors on its surface. So if you don't have the receptor, it won't do anything. So you can keep this purple protein on that purple receptor so that the cell will move in that direction like it's doing But if you don't have that receptor, you can't move your cell. So you can't win if you don't have the right receptor. So this whole game is designed to force you to use as many things as possible and to learn as much as possible. And that's what we're testing now. So we've, we've done preliminary testing and people remember neutrophil and receptors. And we've also been doing um, regular product testing. So we want it to be more fun. So we know it works. What we want to do now is um, add a more fun, more interactive um, graphic user interface. So if any of you have seen Terminator with the heads up display or you've seen uh, Metroid Prime, we're gonna do more like that. So you'll click on a click on a white blood cell, and you'll have this super cool window that opens up. It says neutrophil eats bacteria. Right now, the data is right down here, but this is an old school strategy game style, and only the old school.